this works. Um, and so, okay, so thanks everybody for being here. Um, this is my, you know, like favorite season is testing season. Um, and um, I'm not so sure how things are going to go in this environment, but I will tell you a couple things. Um, I have only received one phone call from a, a mom that, you know, like, doesn't want to send her kid to school at all, just really kind of concerned. Pretty much the calls that I have been receiving is apparently there's a lot of people out of town next week. Um, so the calls I have been receiving are more about um, students coming during the makeup day. So I cannot tell you like if all 790 of our seniors will be here. I don't think they will be, um, but we're prepared if they all do show up. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen. So um, next time Joe and I are doing simultaneous in services, one of us is going to have to leave because I can hear her um, as she's going through the check-ins with everybody. So if I'm distracted, that's why. So um, we are going to be testing um, our seniors this fall um, on October 14th. We have a makeup test scheduled for October 27th. I'm not even gonna think about that until after this test. So I don't know what I'm gonna need as far as staff or materials, but once I have that information, if you guys are needed in any capacity, I'll let you know. I'm hoping it's gonna be a small enough number that we can handle it with just the administrators that are in the building. Okay, so just a reminder, this is the graduation requirement. The Fed has not given um, any um, reprieve on this accountability test as of yet. Um, who knows if that's gonna change, but as of right now, the account accountability measure is still in place, so we have to give the SAT to all of our students. Um, unlike in the past, um, the state would have given us labels um, and we would label all the tests, we'd throw them in alphabetical order, and then we would stuff the bins accordingly. There's no labels for this test. Um, so what we're gonna, this is gonna allow us to assign kids to rooms as they come in. So once a room gets full, you'll be able to start testing. This is really nice because if you're here at 715, if you pick up your materials, and if we have eight kids or nine kids, we'll send them to you and you can start testing. This will allow us to make sure that we're breaking at different times and that we're ending at different times. So that'll kind of help with all the social distancing that we're gonna maintain. Um, so the only groups that have been assigned to a room are the special ed kids with accommodations. They received letters um, telling them their exact room that they're to go to. I really hope that they bring those letters with and that you know they end up in the right place. Um, just as a side note, um, if you guys have any questions while we're going through this, if you could put them in the chat and then we'll just go through all the questions at the end, that would be ideal. All right, so let's see here. Okay, so we are really um, emphasizing safety and trying to make sure that we're doing everything that that we can do to you know, maintain um, a healthy, safe environment. So the rooms have all been set up to provide for six feet of space between, and that's like from your center. So if somebody's sitting down, then like six feet of space around. So the rooms are actually really um, quite sparse. So um, on that sheet where I had indicated like the numbers in each room, the, the number is including staff. So like in B103, the number says nine. That means Miss Austin plus eight students. So when I did the tickets for the test, I um, just kind of numbered them. B103, 
And then I numbered them backwards. So the first kid that comes in the room should be number eight. And the last kid that comes in should be number one. So that um, you know when you get number one, you're ready to go. Okay. Um, students and parents have, I think I've probably we've mailed all the information as well as emailed all the information um, and I probably sent it three or four times so I, I like there's nothing else I can do on that but um, the expectation is that masks are required at all times covering the mouth and nose that's both for staff and for students I honestly don't foresee any problems um, but if there are problems there are hallway floaters that can kind of help and assist. Um, Joe is going to have masks at each door. So if a kid should have forgotten his mask, we're happy to give them a mask so that they're able to come in the building. The other thing is that um, all students have to self-certify before they come into the building. Uh, that's what, one of the things we mailed home. They have to bring that with them and then we will do also the COVID screening before they come in. So we'll do the temperature check, we'll do all the questions, um, and then away they go. Um, we really do want to limit movement. I mean, it's a testing situation, so kids are not like prone to move around but you do have built-in breaks. During the break, you're only gonna be able to send like two or three students max to the restroom. Um, and that's just kind of the way it is. And they'll need to go to the bathroom that is closest to them. Um, so our plan is that um, the floaters are gonna have wipes, hand, you know, like just sanitation wipes and um, you, the floaters will hand the students the wipes for them to wipe down their desk and chair. All the desks and chairs have already been wiped off, but I know that people feel, um, you know, like a little safer or more comfortable if they're in charge of their own sanitation. So that's gonna be an option. And then room supervisors, all the rooms have hand sanitizer, direct the students to hand sanitize before they make it to their seats. Um, we have the test materials are all in the main office. You can either come and pick it up or I will send somebody to deliver it to you. I don't care whatever is um, easiest for you. I would love to see you. So um, even with your mask on, so if you want to come to the main office, I will be here probably at 630 because I won't be able to sleep the night before testing. Um, so those are your two options for getting materials. There's also an SAT school staff agreement that you need to sign off on. I posted that onto the, to the rails if you wanted to pre-read it. Um, I don't know if this is as a result of people, you know, recently cheating on the SAT and having other people take the test and all that other stuff. I used to joke and say there's no SAT jail, but I think we recently learned that um, people do go to jail for messing with the SAT. So there you go. Um, when you come into the room, you're going to write these things on the board. This is all in your um, th these are all in your box. So in your box, you'll have like the quick cheat sheet of directions. And so um, that information will all be there for you to be able to write in. I do have number two pencils in your boxes. If you give a kid a pencil, it's theirs. They get, they get to keep it, it's a gift. So we don't need to collect the pencils back. Um, but if you're not using the pencils, I do want those back in your, um, in your bin when you return them. Um, I think I said this already, but the students are going to get basically um, really fancy index cards that I have handwritten the room number and their number on them. When they come in the room, you can have them, you know, like once they're seated, go ahead and write their ID and name on it. That'll just help you to be able to do the attendance roster and then the um, seating chart because you're not like we're not obviously assigning kids to the rooms. Um, 
during check-in, instruct students to power off electronic vice devices. Students must store their phones in a bag or backpack placed to the side area of the room. So like the phones have to be off, they're gonna be put to the side, they can keep them in their backpack, their purses, whatever, but push them off to the side of the room, wherever it makes the most sense for you. If a cell phone does go off, um, you do need to complete the irregularity report, which is at the end of your manual. And then once your room is full, you can go ahead and start the test. And like I said earlier, we're all gonna be starting at different times so that we can allow for like some staggered breaks as well as dismissal time. Uh, once you get things rolling, and for your, um, for your manual, I also did post the manual on the rails. I have it completely um, marked up so that it's super easy. So I've got it like stapled to the page that you're gonna start at. So it's stapled, you'll open up to page 16. Then there's directions A and B. I've crossed out the directions you don't need. I like asterisks and all kinds of good stuff. So um, the hope is that it's just, you know, easy peasy, no, no problems whatsoever. You will make two copies of your attendance. Once you're gonna put underneath the door, and then I'm asking the floaters if you could please bring the attendance to the PPS office. We did not get to um, pass out, they were junior awards last spring, and now I guess they're senior awards. So Norris and Takara are gonna really quickly use those um, attendance sheets and try and pack up the kids' awards and drop them off at your door so you could hand them out at the end of the testing. Just they're, they're, they're not things that we can mail. So, um, you know, we like the kids to get their stuff. So that was uh, an idea we came up with. So if that doesn't work, no worries. We're, we'll, we'll get it to them eventually. Um, so this, this is just, you know, like the little bits of information. I do have all that marked in the manual. The one real big difference this year is that no student will have completed the pre-admissions session. Um, so the very last thing you're gonna do is a like one-tenth of what the normal pre-admission stuff is. It's just having the kids fill out if they want their scores sent to schools, they can send it to up to four schools. So there is, um, in your bins, there'll be that information in there as well. Uh, just a couple, you know, reminders that um, don't leave materials on the kids' desks. You actually have to pass them out. Um, they are organized in serial number, so that's how you should pass them out and how you should do the um, seating chart. And then um, the essays are at the very end of the test and you don't pass out the essays until you get to that point. So you're gonna pass out the answer sheet, the test booklets and the like main test booklet at first and then the essay comes later. Um, I put this just together. This is you know not a guarantee. This is how it would work but these are estimates for start and start time, it's start and stop time. Um, we did tell the students that they all had to be here by 745. The buses are planning on getting here so that we have a start time at 745 as well. So we're, 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 we're hoping. We will have um, grab and go lunches for kids at the um, exits and we want the kids to leave at the doors they came in. So our plan is we're counting the kids as they come into the building and then if there's, like I'll make it up, door 37, if 50 kids came in door 37, we'll have 50 lunches available at door 37 so the kids can just grab and go. If they don't want a lunch, they don't need to take a lunch, but it's a really long time. We're not doing any snacks in the room. They're really, there's no eating in the room, um, so, 
that's what we came up with. Um, and then just a reminder for you guys, this is a test that the kids can use for college admissions and we want to give them um, their best opportunity to do well on it. I We've canceled all of our Saturday tests here in the building, so both ACT and SAT, and I know that has caused a lot of our seniors stress. So for some of the kids, this is really their first opportunity to get a standardized score um, for purposes of admission, and I've been getting lots of emails from students and parents um, really kind of like looking forward to this opportunity. Um, so as you're testing, remember to please record the start and stop times and you have to notate those in your, um, in your manuals. There is a really nice start and stop time cheat sheet on 37 in your manual and I have that marked with a post-it note. So you'll be able to like just get there real quick if you need to. Um, yeah, I think I said all those things already. Um, after the test, you're gonna collect the folders individually. Um, you know, just make sure that everything is there. You're gonna complete section one, part A of the testing room materials. I actually um, have that printed out for you already with the serial numbers that are in your bin. So you just have to confirm it and then you'll sign. Um, you will, you know, collect your materials afterwards. You can dismiss, like anybody who's walking or driving, they can be dismissed as soon as you're done. If you have students that need to take bus transportation, um, the buses, so actually, Brian said the buses will be here at 1230. So you can, you can release everybody when they're done, because even the buses will be here. So that's just a change that we're making on the fly. And then I am changing this. Um, don't return the materials to E271. That's our normal testing closet, but I'm kind of camped out in the main office. So I'll just be using the um, conference room in the main office to you know, kind of get all this stuff together. Um, if you uh, don't want to come to the main office, you can ask a floater to bring it down or you can call the main office and somebody will come and get it for you. Um, in your manual, it does give you the information on what the permitted calculators are. Ultimately, it's the student's responsibility to know what the calculator is for them to use. Um, but if you need to check and make sure, you can just use the back of that, you know, in the manual, it'll give you that information. We have um, like testing materials that we've got like, a SAT sent us about 800. They're sitting at door one. Kids have been coming in to pick them up. They're just kind of review materials, as well as it does kind of give you the information, you know, what calculator and all that good stuff. So there's uh, there were a few questions in the chat. I just kind of like wrote them down for you so you didn't have to read through everything. If kids bring in their own food or snack, is that okay for them to just kind of do that discreetly? Or, uh, or are so, we gonna? So unless there's a medical reason why a kid should be eating, the answer is no. Like, so okay. there's, there's no eating in the rooms right now. Thanks, Ms. Unless there's like that. a diabetic kiddo somebody asked and then someone asked if rooms uh are the bigger rooms getting filled first and how long do they wait to start if not full and i assume we'll just kind of yell down to floaters and spread the word so um my intention is i have this spreadsheet of what um tickets are at each door if like if if Miss Lingafelter is the first person in the building and she's in G161, we're going to fill G161 first. So um, each one of the check-in areas have they'll have radios, and we'll just let them know. Um, we should all tests should be started by eight. Um, if you that uh, once number one comes into your room, that should be it. So we put the tickets in reversed order so that like when you hit number one, you know your room is full. Does that make sense? No, Peter doesn't? 
No, I, I don't know. What does that mean? Okay, so um, Miss Lingafelter is in room G161. We have uh, nine tickets for G161. The first okay. one we're going to hand out is number nine, then right. eight, seven, six, until we get to number one. Uh, if we have a question or a problem during testing, who can we contact? Chrissy, what kind of um, problem are you thinking? Because I, I, like, we don't usually have problems. I'm sorry, I was muted. Okay. Um, you know, I don't even foresee one because I've done this before, probably like most of us. But I know in the past, like, um, when we were doing testing in a regular, you know, setting, I feel like Missy, maybe it was because you would, you were doing SATs, it would be like, okay, text me if you have this question, or if this happens, you know, if it's something that we don't know if we should write up in a, a regularity report or something like that, you know, who do we contact for sort of immediate response? Yeah, so you can contact me. Okay. Um, even if you ask a floater to come and, and like ask me to come yeah. up, I can certainly do that. Perfect. Um, yeah, I mean, testing, like, here's the thing. We're not in regular school. So the kids who want to test are the ones who are going to come. Like, right. right. I don't foresee it. Again, I just feel comfortable knowing like, okay, what number, if there is a question that should be answered, you know, immediately. Thank you. Carrie. I, oh, uh, so Jen Kreider asks, is it possible with numbers that a group doesn't fill so they won't get to one? Uh, Jen, that would be possible if like you're one of the later rooms and we only had five kids. And if that was the case, you would start by eight o'clock. But the, the rooms I'm hoping are gonna fill pretty rapidly. Lisa, can I ask a question? Yes. I'm in two rooms. Yeah, but they're, they're combined. They're joint rooms. What do, what do I put on the test? Oh, uh... It's 104, 104 and 106. Yeah, put 104. Thank you. Um, Sue asks, did I mean that individuals, no, I'm sorry, when the whole group is finished, that's when the kids can leave. So it's not each individual, but when your whole group is done, they can be dismissed. Uh, John asked, are we collecting so cell phones as the kids go in so none of them can go off? John, that like whatever makes the most sense for you for collecting it, it's in the instructions. But if you want to tell the kids like as they're coming in, hey, turn your cell phones off, you know, I'm, put them over here in the side. That's totally fine. Okay, perfect. Thanks. Um, so uh, there are a couple questions about like how do we know if a student has a medical condition i think we're just going to extend um we're just going to trust if a kid tells you if a kid says like i need to eat something because i'm diabetic or whatever i low, whatever they tell you we're just going to believe them because because why not like I'm, I'm just trusting everybody's doing the right thing Joe, if, if you're having a, a real problem with the student not wearing his mask, just give me a call. Like, I don't anticipate that being a problem, but if it is, just give me a call. Uh, if the room is not full, how long should we wait? We need to start by eight o'clock. Ooh, 
Will there be a board in the field house? No, Joanne, let me think about like what we can do because in the past when we tested in the field house, we used the um, scoreboard, but there's no way this information was written down there as it was supposed to be. Okay, sure. I'm sorry, what? So I have a I have a portable board in the orchestra room. All right, I'll go get it. Thanks, it's a Peter. whiteboard. On, it's a whiteboard on one side and the music staff on the other. Perfect. Hey, Teresa. I'm sorry. It's Amy. L. Um, hey, Teresa. You could also like project it on a screen, like they do in the cafeteria. Like put like put it on a slide and just have it projected big so the kids could see. Or LCD projector. Idea. Thanks. There, there's a projector in PE as well, and you could you could just project it onto the wall. I don't know where, which way the desks are going to be arranged, but it could just project on the wall. Um, yeah, I don't. I'll have to. I'll have to. I don't know how we're setting up the field house or anything. Those will be set up probably the day before. So it's I, I can go in on Tuesday and take a look. Um, somebody asked if. Um, if kids have to take it, if they've already taken it before? The answer is yes. This is the test for accountability. Um, and so this is the one that counts for graduation. So a student could have tested on a Saturday. That's not an accountability test. The During the school day is the accountability test. Uh, we are all SAT with the essay. Uh, when do the doors open for students again? We're going to have people at check-in at, at 7.15. Cassie, I put that late arriving room, but I honestly don't think that's going to be a real thing. Um, I, but my thought was, okay, what if there was a late bus? Like we need to make sure if they're like if kids are supposed to get themselves to school, I'm not worried about turning them away for testing. But if we have a late bus, we need to make sure that those kids are getting tested. So um, we'll let you know the day of if there's a late bus and we need to have your room going. Okay. All right. Just wanted to check. Yeah, I I'm I'm anticipating that everything's going to be perfect. So. But I'm also realistic, so we have you there in reserve if it's not perfect. Okay. All right. Um, what way will proctors be contact will contact the floater if needed? Um, you know what, Greg, I, I didn't grab these, but I can. We have these red slips of paper that we've used in the past that say relief, please. I'll go grab those from the testing closet and just throw them in the bins. Thank you. Um, Peter says kids have said they changed their mind and they don't want to do an essay. That's not an option for this. This is this is the accountability test. So they need that writing score as well. Jen Kreider, I don't understand the question about will all bathrooms be propped? Oh, you're not letting the kids touch the doors. Um, you know what? I don't know the answer to that question. So I can I can check with um, Jeff on that. Um, yeah, I, they're all propped right now. Okay, the there you go. Are, all the ones that are open are propped right now. So the answer should be yes.
Okay, and so here is just like the final reminders. If there are more questions, I am 100% happy to answer them. I didn't see any more. Um, oh, one just came through. So let's go through this and then I'll, I'll pull up the um, chat again. So again, like these are, you know, just like the, don't forget, these are the rules. Um, if you need anything, there's loads of people that are gonna be around, like there's floaters that can help. If you really need me, my, you, my phone number is on these materials. You can go ahead and text me and I'll be happy to come and, and give you any help or assistance that you might need. Um, So there's a question about using bathrooms. Um, yeah, we're not gonna prevent kids who have to use the toilet from using the toilet. So um, there are scheduled breaks. And so that's when you could send two or three students at the, at the most. But just the general rule for SAT is if somebody needs a break during testing, they can leave, go to the bathroom and come back. They don't get any extra time. But if, if that's a need, um, you can certainly let them let them go. Um, once testing is done, can we go into our classrooms? Yes, you can, because um, everything is going to be cleaned again, like everything's cleaned regularly, but yeah, all these rooms will be cleaned again at the end of the night. Yeah, if a student wants to use their own hand sanitizer, that's fine. It can't be kept out though. It would need to be under them. And then yes, yes, second floor bathrooms will be open. Any any additional questions? Teresa, I had one real quick. I know you said earlier um, that once they're done, they can leave. So I would say like the last test they're taking, let's just say I have 10 students and one of them gets done 20 minutes before. We don't let them out, right? We got wait. No, no. Yeah, it's when everybody's done, then they're dismissed. Okay, thank you. And remember, even when they're done with the test, there is that one piece that normally we wouldn't do where you're gonna pass out the booklets so the kids can put in up to four schools to send their scores to. So that'll be the last thing that you do. Okay, thank you. What about when they're finished with their um, like Joe was just saying, if someone finishes early, you know, and they, they, you know, they've got to sit there and wait and, uh, you know, we can't even go on to a next section of a test. What if they say, Hey, can I grab my phone right now since I'm finished? No. Okay. Yeah. Cause I mean, they might be finished, but they're going to disturb somebody else. Right. So okay. It's no phones. Got it. Anybody else? I'm not kidding. I'm really excited that I'm gonna see people on Wednesday. I'm really happy. So. It's probably somewhere, but since I've got your attention, uh, 7.45 for the kids, 7.15 you said, uh, the people that are proctoring can go in. Do you want the floaters there that early or do you want them halfway in between to just avoid running into the students as far as the, the staff traffic? Yeah, I, I guess I really haven't thought about that, Wendy, but, um, you know, I mean, as long as, like, I, I would say by 7.30. Okay. That's a good question. I, well, I've done this before. I've put post-its on the desks numbering them, so I've told kids as they come in the room which desk to go to and I am I allowed to do that this time yeah, you're allowed to do that 
Um, somebody asked about collecting materials in alphabetical order. Um, it's not necessary. It, um, in the like, yeah, you don't need to collect them in alphabetical order. Can I ask one more quick question? Of course. I don't think this was asked. Sorry if it was. If uh, the whole collective group finishes a section before time, are we allowed to move on? No, are we... you are not. Okay. Thank you. It's really bad for the um, the kids that have double time or accommodations. A lot of times in those accommodation rooms, they'll finish. Let's say if it was supposed to be 90 minutes, they'll finish in 70 and you can't move on. <coughs> And yes, swipe cards work. I may have missed this, but is there a certain place you would like floaters to go report when we get there? No, I'm just going to trust that you're going to where you need to be, unless you'd like to come and see me and say hi. <laughs> okay, sounds good. And that's the other thing. So, you know, nobody knows if, if somebody is going to get exposed over the weekend or get sick on the day. If you're ill, please do not come to work. We will put a floater into your into your test room. Um, if you know, like if anything comes up and you're not able to report and you're supposed to be a proctor, that's why floaters, you're involved in this training. We're gonna flip a floater in there. Um, but like no need to put anybody, you know, anybody's health in, in jeopardy if you're unwell. And that was the message I sent to the kids today. If you're unwell, stay home. We'll see you on the 27th. All right, you guys can uh, jump off. I'll hang on in, in case anybody has any um, any additional questions. Thank you. More questions in the chat. Yeah, that was a good question about the smart uh, watches. Yeah, I was just wondering about that. That's a so, good question. Okay, I I am so sorry, but what does a does a smart watch be like? Like it's, an it's Apple Watch, but they have access to their phone, you know, it's, uh, it's connected to their phone. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I would hate to say anything right now without me double checking the manual. So um, I will send something out to everybody on this group. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to give wrong information on that. Teresa? Yes. The, the iWatch has been in the manual for a couple of years now. They're not supposed to have them on. Okay, so then we'd need to collect those and put them in bags as well. Yeah, it should, it should go right with their phones. Okay. I, yeah, I, I don't have one of those fancy watches, so I don't know what it does. Thanks, Christine, for asking. And thanks, Courtney, for knowing. Yeah, I, I barely know how to use it, but, you know, I have one. <laughs> yeah, they can read text and they can get on the internet with it, so it, it, it's, it's a no-go. Okay. And then um, someone asked if they could put their phone under their desk. No, however, like you're not shaking the kids down for their phone. Like if a kid has their purse and it's under their desk and their phone's in there and it's turned off, you are you don't need to investigate any further. You don't need kids to show you that they don't have a phone. Um, but like the instructions are that if you have a phone, power it down, store it over here. Hey, Teresa, if, if, if we do that and one of them does go off, do, like does that whole room is that like voided or we have to fill that form out or yeah, you, fill, you fill the form out, but the room doesn't typically get voided. That okay. person might get voided. Okay. You can tell them that I would tell the kids that if your phone gets off, you're going to get voided. We can't guarantee that that's going to happen, but it could. Yeah. It scares them enough. Yeah. All right, thanks everybody. Hi, thank you.